In this video I'm going to uh, repair the skipping problem on this Sony 300 disc Mega CD changer. And we've already looked at the problem with the, the catch that was jamming that was preventing it from loading correctly every time. Sometimes it would, sometimes it wouldn't, but we've solved that problem. Now we're going to address the skipping problem. Let's check this one out. So here's loading this thing up. Hmm. It was like the CD got stuck there. We'll try ejecting that and uh, loading it again. It's not grabbing the disc correctly. Let's get a closer look at that mechanism. Okay, watch this. It's, it's got a couple things wrong with this thing, but watch what happens here. Oh, I gotta turn this a bit so you guys can see the mechanism a bit better. Okay, we're gonna watch when it loads. There's a little plastic arm that is sticking. Watch. This little arm that holds the disc in place until it claps is getting stuck. And that's stopping the disc from turning. That's one of the problems here. We have a sticking arm. The complaint is that it skips forward in time too, so let's just let it play here and see if it does... Ah! It just started over again. What happened there? So we have a reading problem too. Like the laser is not moving. So here's the back of the mechanism here. I'm wondering if this gear is sticking. See, that's the drive that drives the, the actual pickup back and forth is right inside here. And sometimes what happens is you get some debris in, the, in between the teeth of the gears and they get stuck. That's quite often what happens on these uh, mega changers is you get, you get a little grain of dirt inside the teeth here. And it'll cause the teeth to stick. And I'm wondering maybe if that's what the issue on this one is. So we're going to remove the disc and have a look at that mechanism because something is preventing this pickup from moving forward and it's starting the track over again.
hopefully this will remove this mechanism and I can take a look at the internal workings. So that's got that cover removed. Let's take a look at the actual mechanism. It should just lift out, which it does. Okay, now we can inspect the actual unit itself and see whether there's any things sticking on here. I'm just going to unplug the board here, the ribbon connector. That way I can look at the laser away from the rest of the chassis. And see if there's anything that's causing this to stick. Because quite often what happened on these units is you get a little grain of debris in the slide track here and it would cause the uh, sled to stick when it's trying it when the when the motor is trying to move it, it causes the sled to stick and uh, the motor will kick in more torque to overcome the resistance and cause it to skip forward or skip back usually it's skip forward and the grease is really dry on the rail here it's if you look at this the the grease is dry so this thing needs to be lubricated we'll start by lubricating the mechanism so I'm going to take the metal chassis out I'll remove these four screws here so that I can access that and work on it so I'm just going to push this out of the way a bit more just so that I can work on this out of the unit unit number one Phillips for this <clears throat> Here comes the rain they were promising, you can hear it. We're going to remove this gear by just depressing the little release on the bottom here and should be able to just lift the gear up. There's a couple of little tabs down here, I'm just going to grab a pair of needles and those pliers. So we can depress the tabs and that will allow me to pull the gear out. Okay, now we can inspect to see if there's anything, any debris, and any reason why this is sticking. Oh, it is sticking. Look, look at the look at the 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 rod here. It's, it's sticking against it. It's actually sticking quite badly. You can see the rod moving. This is probably what's wrong with this unit. Is this is gummed up? So we're going to remove the slide rod, and that's done by just releasing this little plastic catch here and pushing the retainer rod out and we're going to clean this up and we're going to re-lubricate this because the grease on here is dry like like it's it's sticky it's sticky so we're going to clean this and we're going to clean and lubricate this and clean the bearing here that slides back and forth and I just want to make sure that there's no any dirt or debris in any of these teeth here. So I'm just going to rotate this gear. I don't feel anything sticking. I'll just get my magnifiers here. We're going to look at the teeth extra close and see whether there's any debris on these teeth. I see nothing on those teeth. I'm just going to inspect the gear here closely to make sure there's no debris in any of these and I'm using my powerful magnifying I don't see any problem with this gear. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. I don't know if the camera's going to focus or not, but uh, right where my finger is pointing, let me zoom it back and I can maybe get the macro to work better. Okay, let me just bring this up close. Yeah. Is the macro going to work? Come on, macro, you can do it. You see the little, the little grain of sand right there in that tooth right there? A little fine grain of sand was in that tooth. And that is all it takes. 
is one little tiny speck of sand that will stick between the teeth and then the motor torque cranks up the torque. So we're going to get to get the Q-tip here we'll get some isopropyl alcohol and we'll clean the the rail and we're going to clean the bearing and then I'm going to get my molly coat grease and we're going to put some more grease on it. Put it back together and see if that fixes the problem on this 300 disc changer. There's a good chance that it will fix the problem with it because this is a common this is quite a common fault. There's a reason I get brought these units to work on because people in the area know me as the guy that looked after all their equipment for 20 plus years when I was in the business so I get people that come to me that I haven't seen you know I, I've been out of the business since 2003 and I get people you know now in 2017 I still get people that come and find me and look me up and uh, want stuff fixed because there's so few places around that still will work on this stuff most of the shops are are long gone and sure you'll get the odd hobbyist that will say oh sure I'll look at it but uh, people that have got this high-end gear they're typically looking for someone who's worked on a few so they they look me up and give me a call and I get all this neat stuff to work on that I get to show you guys how it works See the crap that's coming off this. Now we're going to cut this Q tip. the same on the other one get the the cotton part of the swab in here just to polish it up and clean out any remnants of the the old grease okay now we can grease the rod and put it back together just a little bit clean the, the slide here Okay, now we'll get the rod. I'm going to start installing the rod through here first, and then we'll put some molly coat grease. We'll get that going into the laser assembly so we'll get it lined up. Get that going through there. Pop it in place. Now we're going to put some more on the rail itself here so we can get the back side of that bearing lubricated as well. Again, we don't want to put too much in. If it's too much grease, it's worse than not enough because it's going to attract dirt. And we don't want to attract excessive amounts of dirt. We want just enough on here that it's going to slide back and forth without uh, 
sticking. Put some more grease on this gear here. Have to get another pack of grease here. This one is almost empty. We'll get some grease in there, and that will mesh up with here the laser assembly. When we pop that in place, that will lubricate the gears there. We don't really need much of any on the plastic gears because plastic gears typically there's no friction on them, right? It's not like metal parts. And I find that you don't find any grease on these from the factory. You find some grease on, on this sled assembly and you find grease on the metal to metal uh, rail. But you don't normally find grease on the actual uh, gears themselves here. And the reason for that is simply because all the grease, if you put grease on here, all it's going to do is it's going to attract dirt. It's going to attract dust. And you don't want dust being attracted to these gears because they're going to clog the gears up. So, that said, let's turn this thing back around and remount it. And we'll put it back together and see whether we fixed it or not. I think there's a pretty good chance that it is now going to work properly. Some of the earlier units actually had metal springs that the chassis was seated on, but uh, they found a way to do it with rubber grommets instead. It seemed to do the job okay. Okay, uh, this drops back in place like this. Okay, we've got our CD assembly, reconnect the multi connector here. I'm going to drop it back in place. It sits on this pin back here. And it drops into the groove on the cam gear. And the groove is into the cam gear there. Okay, drops in place like that. Now, we drop the, the top piece of the assembly back in. Kind of goes in like this. Something like that. There we go. Now I'm going to put a few screws in here so that we can test it, see whether it to see whether it loads properly, and more importantly, does it skip? Now, when you reassemble the unit, you got to make sure. I didn't point this out when I had it apart, but I had this in the right place. But this can jump out. This this pin here. This, this plastic tab can jump out of here and that's what holds this clamp so make sure that when you put it back together that clamp is in that that groove there otherwise it can it can jam so I figured I would point that out okay I've got a disc ready to go in here let's press play so we'll just watch this thing go through its paces one more time here This player is kind of cool. It reads the CD text.
This disc has 20 tracks on it, and it, it's exactly 80 minutes. I, actually, it's beyond 80 minutes. It's like 80 minutes and 10 seconds. So I crammed this disc to the absolute maximum capacity that I could. The disc is so full, I actually had to take out the two-second blank space between each track in order for them to fit. So the last track here is track 20. As you can see, the disc has substantially slowed down from the beginning. And everything's working. So this is repaired. This goes back to its owner now, and another one kept out of the landfill. Thanks for watching.